Oh, sorry, YouTube. I didn't turn the recording on. So. <laughs> sorry about that. Maybe I'll post two. I'll post one from last year just so you guys can see if you're looking. But anyway, um, so here we are. And, uh, you know, this is this is one where, okay, so I, I got my friend Avery back there. She says one again, right? So I'm going to uh, I'll make a different suggestion, okay? Because I noticed something here. What degree is this polynomial? Third, one. It's one. third degree. Everybody third degree? Yeah. So x cubed <laughs> minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. Um, I noticed something about that polynomial. It does factor by grouping. And so therefore, I'm going to, now if you wanted to run one through again, you could, and you come up with the same solution. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to just factor this by grouping because I'm really good at factoring like you guys. And so I add the opposite there. I'll group these first two terms. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Why are you adding up? Because I can't put a parenthesis down, uh, in front of a negative. So oh. I, you, you just can't do that. I'm going to take out a negative 4. What do I factor here? X squared. And I'm left with? Yes. Negative 4 times minus 1. So you took out a negative 4. So what can you factor out of these two? So I got an x minus 1 I'm taking out. Marissa commented earlier, she said 1 does work again. Avery said 1 does work again. And Mackenzie said 1 does work again. Notice how it's sitting right there. So that confirms what you guys thought. And then factors to x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Can somebody please tell me how many x minus 1 factors do we have in total? We have 3. We have one here, and then we have these two up here. Question. Okay, first of all, how do you know if you take out four? How do you know that? How, do, how did we know that you could do one again? Yeah. You don't. You they, they just tried it. They were, they were two steps ahead of us. Okay. Also, where does the... Okay, so... Okay, okay. I think I understand. Okay. So I have solutions of what? Somebody tell me my solutions. 1, 1, 1, 2, and negative 2. Now, this is my favorite part of the problem. I said originally, how many negative solutions would we have? 1. How many positive solutions would we have? There's 4. And how many total real solutions are there? That's pretty cool. Okay. Could we graph this? It goes through 1, it goes through 2, and it goes through negative 2. It's a 5th degree polynomial. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to try to come up with a sketch for this graph. 30 seconds? Okay, I don't remember how to find the ups and the downs. It's 5th degree and it's positive. If it's positive, it ends. Yeah. So it's up and... Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, is it okay? If it's odd degree, it starts and ends opposite directions. So we will not test next week, but shortly after Thanksgiving break. So I right now I'd be planning on the Wednesday or the Thursday when we return. Nope, but close. Nope, but close. Yes, Evelyn is correct. Okay. Single root. Triple root. That's what we want to see. Uh, no, I'm still not seeing a triple root. Then your triple root needs to change because I am the evaluator. That's closer. Yeah, I'd give you credit there. It's uh, it's just sometimes, and again, sometimes people do this. They they go to draw the triple root and they go like that. And and again, are you flattening out vertically or horizontally? You need to flatten out horizontally. 
Yes, I could see that. That's excellent. It doesn't matter. No. Junior. She took pre-calc as a sophomore. That that's just you guys. They so hour and a half long. Okay, here we go. Shh. Focus. We're uh, students were a little ill-focused today. Okay, okay. Eyes up here. Kate, let's get back on track. Okay. So, uh, before we get to our kind of final idea, which is the fundamental theorem of algebra, we got to teach you something about uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers. A complex number is of the form a plus b i where A is a real part and B is an imaginary part. Imaginary. So imaginary numbers, we're going to define them right now. So this is, you can't ask why this is. You have When we define something, you have to accept it as true. Okay? Kind of like when we say the heart is that thing in the middle of your body, and you say, well, why is that called the heart? Well, so somebody decided to call it the heart one day, right? And that's just the way it is. So we said that the square root of negative 1 is I. Okay? Now, what does that mean I squared would be? Negative one. Negative one. So here's the most common uh, misconception that people have. They say that I is equal to negative 1. Is that the case? No, not at all. I squared is negative 1, or the square root of negative 1 is I, but I is not negative 1. Um, before you judge the complex number system, let's change the way we live. So here we go. We have a complex number here. We're going to subtract another complex number. You simply uh, subtract real terms and complex terms. So it's just like you think you would do. We have 4 plus 3i, and it's going to be a minus 6 and a plus 8i. So I look at the real parts, which are 4 and negative 6, and that makes negative 2. 3i and 8i, 11i. We always write the real part first, and we write the imaginary part second. That will be our standard form of a complex number. If you flip them, I will not mark it wrong. But again, I would just ask, why not write it correctly? 1 minus i plus 3 minus i minus 6 plus 5i. If we put our real parts together, what do we get? 1, 3, and negative 6 make? Negative 2. And then negative i, negative i, and 5i? 3i. 3i. All right. Now you've learned how to add and subtract. Let's multiply. 4i times 7i is 28i squared. Now... You may have a different way of doing this, which is absolutely fine, but I'm going to show you the best way in terms of teaching it. So what is I squared? So 28 times negative 1 is then negative 28. And if you saw that from the beginning, good for you. I will teach it by using an I squared. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, and then I have I squared. I squared is negative 1, so I get positive 24. Negative 2i times negative i would be a positive 2i squared, or negative 2. What's different about the next one? There are three of them, and I get a positive 12i to the third power. Again, I like to teach it where we look at the i squared. So I read it as 12i squared times i. So what would 12i squared become? Negative 12, so it's negative 12i. Negative i cubed. Negative i squared times i. What is i squared negative times a negative? One. Positive 1 times i? 1i one one or just i. Okay, let's look at the problem that you would get on the ACT, okay? 
So some of these could be ACT problems, but this one would be probably the most sought out. I to the 122nd power. That could take a while, couldn't it? Well, I would like to write it so that I see an I squared. All right, so fortunately, I understand Mackenzie language, and I know exactly what she was saying. She was saying that if it's I squared here, then what I do is I take this and divide it by 2 to get 61st power. Does everybody agree that I squared to the 61st is, in fact, I to the 122nd? Because a power to a power, you multiply, right? And so this is I to the 122nd. Everybody agreed? So now she has the I squared, which is negative 1, and we raise that to the 61st power. If you multiply negative 1 an odd number of times, is it going to come out to be positive 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. We took a problem that looked very difficult. We made it super simple. That should blow your mind a little bit. Flip it over. What do you think we do with this one? We distribute. 3i times 2 is? 6i minus 15i squared. Yes, so 6i plus 15, I will write it in standard form as 15 plus 6i. Okay. What do you notice about the next one? Okay, if we foil it out, what's going to happen to the middles? 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is 2i. Negative i times 2 is negative 2i. And then we get negative i squared. So again, what happens to the middles? They cancel. Why? Looking for a word we've learned before. Starts with a C. Conjugates. They are conjugates. Yeah. Was that my friend Kaylee or is that Whitney? Laura. Way you go, Laura. Yeah. So these are conjugates. When you multiply conjugates, the middles cancel. And that's a beautiful thing. So we're going to make these go away. They are conjugates. We have 4. And what's negative i squared then? That's going to be plus 1, so we get 5. So there's no imaginary term at all. Do the next one on your own. Ready, set, go. Twenty-five minus thirty-nine I. We good to go there? Okay. So, what's uh, different about these last four? Yeah, you see, I in the denominator. You're not allowed to keep I in denominators. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, we have to get rid of the I in the denominator. Any idea how we're going to do that? Multiply the top and bottom by I. So, on the top, 4 times I is 4I. And the bottom, I times I is negative 1, or I squared. Yep. Anybody want to guess what 4I divided by negative 1 is? Good. Next one is very similar. What do you think people like to multiply a top and bottom by? We don't have to multiply by 2. I just multiply by I. We don't care that the 2 is in the denominator. Negative 2. What's going to happen to the negatives? I want to be clear about this, folks. Just everybody understand that 3 over 2i is the same thing as 3i over 2. Those are the same. Now, I can't drop to the denominator because it's i over 1. But just make sure that you understand that those are the same. Either one is absolutely fine. What's different about this example? It's plus 1. It's plus one. Oh, no. So, 
if you were to do this, and don't write this down, if you were to multiply the top and bottom by i, what we would get is 3i over i squared plus i, or 3i over negative 1 plus i. Did the i go away? No, we just got another i, didn't we? So who's got the good idea? Close? Close? Laura, what should we do? I minus 1. When you don't know how to do the math, do the Spanish, multiply by the conjugate. Here we go. There we go. We multiply the top and we get 3 minus I. And you're going to see in a second why we wanted to multiply by the conjugate. Because watch what happens in the denominator. We know that when we multiply by the conjugate, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I wrote that incorrectly. Wait, just, I minus 1, right? I minus 1, I minus 1, so 3I minus 3. You're going to see why we multiply by the conjugate. Okay? So as we multiply by the conjugate, what's I times I? I squared, which is negative 1, right? What's going to happen to the middles? So 1i and negative 1i are going to go away. And then what's 1 times negative 1? So do you see how we get rid of any of the i's? So in the top, we have 3i minus 3. In the bottom, you have negative 2. Now, this is not in standard form, is it? So what you can do is you divide each of these by the negative 2. So watch what happens. Negative 3 over negative 2 is just 3 halves. That's your real part. And your imaginary part will be minus 3 over 2i. Yeah, I like okay. So, so I'll, I'll write it out. Would everybody agree that that's the same thing as 3i over negative 2 minus 3 over 2? Or, I'm sorry, um, plus, there, it's negative 2, it's actually a minus, sorry. <laughs> the idea is that you could separate a fraction into two parts. Here we get a positive 3 halves. Here we get a negative 3i over 2. So you can divide by each part. Last one. What do you want to do here? Nope. The i is off to the side. It is not in the denominator. What do you want to do? Five minus two i. Good. Help me multiply the top. Ten. Minus 4i minus 5i plus 2i squared. Plus 2i squared. Good. And in the denominator, remember those are conjugates. So what's going to happen in the middle? They will disappear. Now you just have 25 minus 4i squared. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Wait. The 10i and the negative 10i go away. So it would be plus 4. Very good. So Morgan sees right now that the minus 4i squared will become a plus 4. Everybody agreed? So 25 plus 4 is? So 29 is my denominator. And then in the numerator, what is going to be 2i squared? Negative 2 plus 10 is 8. And then we're going to have a minus 9i. So if I want to write that in standard form, it is 8 29ths minus 9 29ths i. You're ready to complete that worksheet. Please leave problems, or the last two problems. Don't do the last two problems. Save those for when we return on Monday.